And welcome to this edition of ACAP Today for the week of July 6, 2020. I'm Jason Parent with the Aroostook County Action Program. On this week's program, we're going to speak with folks at the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center, which uh, is in a new location now. We're gonna to talk to them about the process of what happened with the wellness shelter and how well that project went at the University of Maine at Presque Isle for the past few months, but also look ahead to their new facility and the things that they'll be doing at the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center in the months to come. But before we do that, we're going to look at the news you can use and information we wanna share with you today uh, that can help you uh, as we continue to work through this pandemic. And we'll begin uh, by letting you know about the change in status of our offices. Uh, we are open by appointment um, here at 771 Main Street in Presque Isle and shortly uh, later this month we'll be opening by appointment only at our Holton Center office but we're also consistently available virtually you can call us on the phone or you can uh, work with us electronically we can even uh, zoom you or have meetings with you in this capacity and we also have curbside assistance available the curbside assistance here at 771 Main Street in Presque Isle uh, is available just drive up to the facility and call our main number and we'll send someone out to get your paperwork and to work with you right outside if you don't have a scheduled appointment where you're coming inside the building. Um, and in our other locations, if you just call ahead and let them know that you would like curbside assistance, they will arrange uh, for that to happen. So please do uh, reach out to us in one of these ways. And again, we are open by appointment only here at our Main Street uh, Presque Isle uh, headquarters, um, but also soon in Holton as well. And as we move forward in the season, we will be assessing how we will handle appointments for HEAP, the Home Energy Assistance Program and the Women, Infant and Children's Program in the coming months and be sure to share that information with you. Uh, if your family or your household is in need of any assistance at all, we do have a new ACAP Navigator service that is part of our pandemic response and how the agency is directing part of its CARES Act funding to meet current community needs. So please do consider reaching out. Uh, a navigator can help you do just that, navigate some of the systems and find some of the supports that you might need at this time. Um, and uh, we certainly want to be able to help you in that capacity. So if you have any questions at all, or if you are indeed impacted uh, economically or your family is experiencing hardship at this point, please do reach out to us um, and ask to speak with our navigators. They are a wealth of information and can certainly be of great assistance to you. Uh, we also want to remind folks about the uh, special enrollment period for individuals who have been impacted by COVID-19 as it relates to the health insurance marketplace. Uh, because if you have been impacted by COVID-19, you certainly do qualify to get into the uh, insurance marketplace if you've lost your insurance through your employer because of a layoff or some other change in your employment status. Please do give us a call. We have a health Care Marketplace Navigator uh, working here within our agency, Stan Targonsky, who we had on a few weeks ago, and he is certainly available to help you. 764-3721, uh, I should say 3721, is the number to call uh, to reach uh, Stan, and we can put him in touch with you. Uh, the rent relief program uh, is continuing through the month of July through Maine Housing, a partnership of Maine Housing and the community action agencies across the state of Maine, including ACAP. It provides a one-time bridge payment of up to $500 to support rental assistance for families or households who have had their income impacted by COVID-19. Uh, funding has been extended to include the month of July and we are working with officials from both Maine Housing and the Department of Economic and Community Development about a rent assistance program that may kick in later this month or into August as well. So if you haven't already been assisted through this program and your household has been impacted by COVID-19, you can either go to mainhousing.org slash COVID rent or call us here at 764-3721 and we can help you uh, through the application process um, and see if you qualify. The uh, Home Energy Assistance Program is continuing to see folks through the remainder of this week and into the middle of next week. Uh, Wednesday, July 15th is the deadline uh, to apply for what we consider the current season. Applicants who have applied since late August of last year will be eligible to once again apply after the August 24th new season kicks in. But we certainly are encouraging folks who have not applied yet who have not applied since last August uh, to please consider applying. The income guidelines have changed and more people are eligible. Um, and obviously the, uh, the credit does stay with you uh, in, in through 2021. Um, so uh, now is a great time to get in for a quick appointment. We have slots available between now and next Wednesday when the deadline closes. 
Uh, Head Start applications are also still being accepted for fall 2020, although those uh, slots are going fast. We certainly encourage you to give us a call at 768-3045 if you would like to learn more about our Head Start, Early Head Start, or our child care programs at this point. We'd be happy to speak with you about any of those. Um, we've been talking about our uh, Improving Outcomes for Youth program that has been hosting financial literacy classes online. They are going to be hosting uh, virtual classes uh, for the uh, Be Proud, Be Responsible curriculum, which talks about things like HIV and AIDS and risk behaviors and uh, about safe sex and abstinence and, and the options around, um, around how youth can help navigate these uh, important topics um, and these, these important issues. So we really encourage uh, parents or kids that are interested, uh, youth age 16 through 24 in particular, particularly in, in these classes. They're going to be held virtually online on the 13th, 15th, 17th, 20th, 22nd, and 24th of July from one to two o'clock each day. Uh, Chastity Holland is the person who you can contact for more information. Her information is there on your screen. Um, we certainly do encourage, there's some very valuable information to be shared in uh, these classes and we uh, certainly encourage folks to sign up and take advantage of this valuable information. Uh, we also want to remind folks that the Women, Infant, and Children's program uh, is still seeing uh, customers. They are seeing them virtually at this point, and uh, they have received a waiver to do so through the end of the month of July. One change in the program, the program has been relocated here to our 771 Main Street uh, facility in Presque Isle, uh, and they will be starting the eWIC program up soon, which is a wonderful new program that will allow a much greater ease of benefit uh, for customers. Uh, so please do contact our WIC program if you have any questions about the new eWIC program or about registering for this program. Uh, it's a very valuable uh, opportunity for families to receive nutrition assistance, families with young children, preschool age children, children in particular. Um, the other thing we want to uh, let folks know of at this time is workforce workshops. Uh, we do have two of the remaining in the four series of workshops, one coming up this Thursday, July 9th, uh, resume writing, uh, very important as more folks are trying to get back into the workforce after the downsizing that happened at the initial uh, phase of COVID-19. We are also hosting an interviewing tips workshop that's next Thursday, July 16th. Both of these remaining workshops are held on Zoom and are at 1 p.m each of the days uh, noted here. If you'd like more information, Kathy Williams' information is there on your screen. Uh, please do reach out and contact her. Quitting uh, smoking at this time or quitting use of tobacco products is something that folks may be interested in and we have a program uh, that is available for you and can be done and delivered remotely. Please contact Elaine Sype if you have any interest in quitting uh, tobacco at this time and we certainly encourage you to do that as the health benefits are almost immediate after you've quit smoking. And finally, we want to remind folks about our community needs assessment. Uh, this is an important piece of information that we have out to you that we're looking for information back from you on. It helps uh, all community action agencies uh, deliver their programs and determine where to focus their programming moving forward. Uh, it looks at the underlying causes and conditions of poverty within the community we serve, and it identifies the available resources to address unmet needs of our community's most vulnerable residents. We have uh, available a paper survey. If you'd like to receive a paper survey, we'll gladly send one out in the mail with a postage uh, free uh, return envelope. Uh, please do consider uh, sending that to us, uh, get it, getting a request to us for that or visit us online and you can complete the online assessment. Either way, we're happy to hear what you have to say and we want to hear what you have to say. So please do consider completing the ACAG Community Needs Assessment. Go to our website, go to our Facebook page, and you can find the link there to take it online, or give us a call and we'll gladly send you one in the mail. And with that, that's today's news and information you can use. I'm pleased to welcome to ACAP today three repeat guests. And the last time we spoke uh, with each of these individuals, well, at least the last time we spoke with two of them, was when they were over at the University of Maine at Presque Isle, and um, they were at the Hope and Prosperity Wellness Shelter then. Um, and they are now in a new facility. But first, I want to hear about uh, just a recap, and I'll begin with you, Heidi Ratcliffe. We have Heidi Ratcliffe on the program. We have Jeannie Fox, and we have Amber Tierney. Again, I'll repeat guests, but I'm going to start with you, Heidi, and tell us a little bit about uh, the Hope and Prosperity Wellness Shelter, which you just sort of turned the key on in terms of closing uh, last week. 
We did. We had our last day, um, which was June 30th. Um, we had a goal set in mind so that we wouldn't go over into July. Um, the staff worked really, really hard to push out some successes and to, to rehouse as many people as possible so we weren't transitioning a lot of individuals over to the local homeless shelter. Uh, I think by the end of it, we were able to rehouse everybody. Um, we were we only had to transition two individuals over to the homeless shelter, um, but the, the exciting part of it is they still had access to housing. They still are working with our coaches um, and we are very much still engaged in that process to be able to house them. Um, just didn't happen within the time frame that we wanted to before the closing, um, but they still are safely housed and we're moving forward. So on to the next chapter in, in our new facility. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment, as well as sort of getting a recap of some of the wonderful work that you did, because there's a lot of great specific things. But we thought we'd give folks an overview in this uh, thank you video uh, that you worked on with our development and communications team. And we wanted to share that with the community. It sort of captures the spirit of the wonderful work um, and opportunity that happened in the Hope and Prosperity Wellness Shelter. So I'm going to share this video now uh, with folks so that you can see some of the great things that happened at the shelter and some of the great things that people have to say about the work that happened there. Welcome to the Hope and Prosperity Wellness Shelter. It is truly a blessing to work here. It's a quite a different environment than we're used to, but it's really great giving an opportunity to people who don't normally get an opportunity, a second chance, a helping hand, a step in the right direction to people who are mostly looked over and identified as um, the invisible population. It's great to be able to give people who are experiencing homelessness a hand up. Where would you have gone had this place not been here? I'm not sure. Okay. How do you feel about it closing? I think it's sad. Several residents have come and gone, and we actually have a family that will be moving into a new home tomorrow as a result of coming to our shelter and working with us here. So that's exciting. I've met some good people and they, you know, being able to help them, support them, find the places to live has been great. And working with the team, ACAP team that I've worked with up here, where I'm from Holton, has been okay. exceptionally great, as far as I'm concerned. It has been a learning experience for sure. Um, ever worked in something of this nature. I'm used to working with kids. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's all been a learning experience and learning everything. It's been fun. I like it. Add one more thank you to everyone who's been involved, sent positive thoughts, um, given gifts, volunteered your time, any way that you've stepped up to the plate during this time, your actions haven't gone unnoticed. We are so deeply thankful and grateful for everything that the entire community together is doing. Without you, there's no us. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And just a great video that really captures uh, the time there. And Amber Tierney and Jeannie Fox, you were both featured along with Heidi Ratcliffe in that video. But I'm going to start with you, Amber, in terms of sharing with uh, our viewers the uh, work uh, that you uh, accomplished there. We talked about it in, in very general terms, but there were some really meaningful things that were done in the time that you worked with, what, 17 individuals all told um, at the Hope and Prosperity uh, Resource or Wellness Shelter, I should say. It was a really humbling opportunity to be able to essentially live alongside of human beings um, in multiple different uh, areas of, of their development and their growth process um, in life. It was great to be able to move people into their first apartments. It was great to be able to sit down and work on homework with people who are trying to um, get, a, get a high set or a um, 
a GED equivalents. It was great too. It was, it was, it was humbling to sit and comfort people while they cried um, through their life experience. It was fantastic to sit and laugh with people as they, as they just enjoyed it. It was great getting to take people from a place of um, client, customer, consumer to human being. And that was really what we got to experience during this time. And I think it was as rewarding for us as it was for the people that we served. I said it better myself in terms of what I understand from your experience. Jeannie Fox, uh, you worked um, different shifts, um, pretty much a consistent shift as you were there through the time. But what, what kind of things were you able to, to do in terms of helping individuals who were experiencing homelessness, who were staying at the shelter, achieve in the time that you were there? So I would come in for the two to 10 shift uh, Monday through Friday. Um, so I would work with residents um, very similar to Heidi and, and Amber. We would work on school work that needed to be done, um, but also housing applications. Um, it was sometimes a challenge to find housing for our residents. So we would be looking online. We would be looking um, in the paper to see what was available for housing and, and trying to find pictures for them to look at because even though, you know, we're saying, well, here's an apartment. We, yeah, but what does it look like? Where is it located? Um, so those are all things um, that I worked with. Also would just, um, the meal time would come, you know, so then made sure everyone would have supper, made sure laundry was done. Also um, just sometimes encourage them, hey, have you had your shower yet today? <laughs> um, so just a lot of, um, sometimes a lot of mothering would happen, but just listening to them and, and seeing what they needed for the day. Um, sometimes they were having a hard day and just sitting down and well, let's sit, let's chill for a few minutes. Let's talk about it. But sometimes that's all we needed to do. We did a lot of linking to uh, medical providers. And so whether that be, um, we have an MOU, a close partnership with Northern, Light, uh, Northern Lighthouse. And so they were a great resource to us. Uh, many of the residents there were receiving treatment through mental health therapy, as well as substance uh, misuse. Um, groups sessions, it, we got really familiar with Zoom. Um, that was a new approach. Many people were no longer able to access their medical appointments, so everything had to be computerized. So our staff were, were learning to cope with that just as much as the residents that were staying in the facility. Um, so that was a big part of the day as well, was making sure that everybody had their appointments and was able to keep up with their schedule that they normally would have. It's just teaching a different way. Heidi, before I ask each of you what you took from this experience, because there was a lot of learning that was going on and we talked about the educational opportunities that the residents had, but I imagine that the three of you also learned a tremendous amount um, in your, in the, through this experience. Talk to me for a moment about the, um, the partnerships that made this possible. I know that we are forever grateful uh, to our hosts at the University of Maine at Presque Isle, but really this is a, a community-wide partnership that came together and really extended beyond this community. We did. We have so many people that became um, a huge partner between the town having um, providing us with curtains to provide space and barriers. Um, University of Maine and Presque Isle, I, I can't even begin to put into words um, the amount of work that they have done with us to be able to make this happen and how pleasant it was working with them. Anytime we called them, they were there at the drop of a dime. Um, no was never uh, an option for them. And so it was amazing to have partners like this. Of course, Maine Housing, our funders who made this all possible without them, you know, uh, the overflow shelter would not have existed. Um, the management system who gave us the cots, the use of the cots for residents to sleep on. There's just so many partners um, that had a part in this. And even the community, Walmart reaching out to us when we opened and said, you know, you, we know you need supplies, come get supplies for your overflow shelter. Um, there's really so many to name. It's hard to make sure you list them all. Um, but community members, we had community members we had a wish list online and community members kept purchasing things that we needed for the shelter online, um, snacks and drinks and bedding, um, hygiene products that were just shipped to us um, daily to make sure that our residents had everything that they need to be as successful as they can. And, and you know, what one box of granola bars, you know, might have not meant the world. It, it 
fed our folks. It made it hungry and it was home food. And yeah, it just was amazing to see everybody come together to do it. Now, the big question for you is, I mean, we talked about that residents um, left uh, with a place to live. Uh, they left with the start of a, a high set or, or what we consider a, an equivalency degree for high school diploma and, and, and a thirst for that knowledge and, um, and, and other placement opportunities that they had. What did the three of you learn? Heidi, let me begin with you. What did I learn? What did I not learn? Um, it's, it's a different experience to be able to meet with somebody in an office for a half an hour to an hour. Um, even at the Hope and Prosperity Center when folks would be there all day, it's entirely different when you're going in during sleeping hours and you're going in um, at, you know, six o'clock in the morning when people are just waking up. Um, it's a connection I've learned so much about mental health and addiction, um, things that I always thought I had a really good understanding and a handle on, um, and now I have a totally different viewpoint. Um, and that is something that I would, would never um, replace because it's gonna affect the way that I work with folks in the future, 100%. Jeannie Fox, your lessons learned? Wow, um, to piggyback, on what Heidi said, definitely all of those things were learned, but um, I've learned um, that my coworkers will go to the end of time with me. Um, and that was a nice thought. That's, um, that's really nice to know. Um, but I also have learned um, these residents, they've, um, they've become our friends in the sense that um, it's not always about them taking from us and for us giving to them. They're, we're able to sit down with them and have a conversation about what's going on at, around the world with us. And, um, and that's nice to, um, to be able to, to work three months with them and see, um, think back about where we started with them and then where we ended with them. That was a good thing to learn. And you, Amber Tierney, your thoughts? I think that my biggest takeaway from this experience is going to be the duality of impact is that we fight every day to make a difference in the lives of those that we serve and we come into contact with, but never is there a time where um, one, you know, being or organization or organism impacts another without that leaving a resounding effect on the other person that when when contact is made there will always be a give and a take and i am forever grateful for what our residents have shown us what they have they they have given to us um that is that's something you can never put a dollar amount on there's not that's something that you can never you know equivalent in any other way other than uh, our lives were greatly enriched because of their time with us just as much as theirs were it was a give and take all the way around truly thankful, truly grateful for the, for the experience and the process. Right. So Heidi, Heidi Ratcliffe, um, you are all sitting in a new uh, facility, um, a new facility to you uh, that is going to serve as the sort of continuation of this work and pick back up from where we left off uh, before you headed over to that facility. Um, and so tell us about the return of the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center, where you're at and, and, and about the exciting new venture. And you're on mute, so we're gonna need you to undo that. <laughs> <laughs> One time, of course I had to do it. Um, so we are uh, on Industrial Park. We're actually located in the FedEx building. We share our neighbors, our FedEx and um, Child Development Services. Um, it's a lovely space. It's a little bit bigger than what we were used to. Um, there's three offices. And so the ladies on the screen here are the folks who will be staffing the facility during the day. Um, we knew that when we had the wellness shelter, we didn't want to have a lapse in time. We wanted to ensure that our services would continue and we'd still be able to serve the folks that we were serving. Um, and so that was how this new space um, started. Um, and so literally we shut down on a Tuesday and we started moving on a Wednesday and 
we're hoping that in the next few weeks we'll be up and ready to go for the public. Um, we're still working on a few kinks like phones and internet um, so we can run full capacity, uh, but we're excited to continue the work that we were doing before. Um, we know that it's successful. We've had a lot of success with the folks who have been in the facility, and so we need a space to be able to continue that work. And what, what is that space like, Jeannie Fox? I know that you're looking at a potential target date of the 20th of July for an opening, and if it happens sooner, that would be great, but 20th of July is the target date. So sort of talk me through what the new space is like and uh, how it's working for you. Our new space is um, awesome. You'll, you'll walk in the front door, and it's just a great big open area um, where we have our couch. There we go. We have our couch, some chairs, and then we have our common table um, that everyone can sit at and work on things or just sit and talk. And there are four cubicles. There will be um, laptops there for people to work on resumes or job search. And then our offices are in the very back. Um, we have a full, um, a big room that will be the kitchen area. We're still waiting for a stove to or a refrigerator here, but um, we have two large bathrooms and there's some storage here, which is nice. We're able to store some um, items for people, if it be um, bedding or um, small appliances that are donated. And we'll have those here for when a family um, gets an apartment and they need that item, we're able to provide them with that. Now the, the building is one thing, Amber Tierney, but the work that happens inside it is really the magic. Um, and you are, you, you've demonstrated that you continue to do that in a residential way, if you will, with the Hope and Prosperity Wellness Shelter over the past three months. Um, but for folks who weren't familiar with what happened in the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center, I know we just talked a lot about it happening at the wellness shelter as well. Uh, what can what what is the experience that someone who comes in through the door that was just behind the picture that we had up on the screen a moment ago what is their experience like what can they expect we intend that every experience be the same and it be a welcome home experience a place that you are safe you're secure you're comfortable you're warm you're fed and you're having some of those basic needs that you've gone without or helping to be or are being assisted and being met uh, our intention is that everyone feels feels welcome when they come in our door. You're able to meet with a coach, um, and those coaches can help set up any number of connections uh, through medical appointments, health insurances, any 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 kind of need. We can help facilitate that and helping that to be met. We have area here to um, be able to facilitate um, workshops or different meetings with outside providers. Um, we we wanna be a one-stop shop where people don't have to go to 16 different places around Presque Isle in order to um, meet all of their needs, but they're able to come here in one space and have all of the these things that they have to do to be successful met in one area. Transportation is a huge issue in our community and where we're able to reduce a barrier there by making this a one-stop shop, making this a place where um, let us, like, let us help you, like, let us truly um, endeavor to make life better for you. What can we do to help? And that's really what we're here. We welcome with open arms and ready feet. Like we're ready to get booking and get going. Now, the, um, the model for the work that you're doing was proven, I think, Heidi Ratcliffe, in the first six months of your work before we transitioned over the, the wellness shelter, uh, the work that was being done here at the 771 Main Street facility, which our intent is to return these services there when we get on the other side of, of COVID-19, and we wanted to make sure that you had an adequate space to work in in the meantime. Um, so talk to me about the success and, and, and what you saw in the first six months of service before you transitioned to the wellness shelter and the work that you're hoping to resume in terms of the data and the stories of success that have come out of the, of the resource center. Yeah, so one of the wonderful pieces about having the center is, like Amber was kind of saying, is that it's the one-stop shop. So we were able to connect individuals to both internal um, internal programs and as well as external programs. So we had, you know, our workforce development team right there who was able to help connect folks to either work experiences or employment. Um, and then all of the other services that we have, early care and education, WIC, um, the list can go on and on. Um, so I think in the first six months we had, we do a lot of data collection with folks that are in the center. We do assessments with them to be able to monitor their progress. 
first six months, we had over 850 services that we had completed with the individual um, that we had in the service or in the center, excuse me. Um, and, a, and the majority of them had increased their, uh, through an assessment scale, um, about two steps, which is the difference between someone being in a crisis lifestyle to being safe, which is huge. Um, even one step gain in some, one of the domains that we monitor um, is a huge accomplishment. And all of the folks were able to see an increase. And again, it was an average of a two point increase, um, which is different, which is, which is huge. Um, that's, that's somebody not having any income to being employed from somebody being homeless to being housed. Um, and I don't know how you can can categorize how much of an impact the center has had, but I can tell you for the individuals that we have had, um, it's been a huge difference, or that's what we're told anyway, so. I think one of the uh, most eye-opening things for me is that the, um, the face of individuals who are experiencing homelessness is as varied as our society itself. I think we, I, I, through the opportunity to have the facility on site here at our main office for a six month period, um, we saw individuals, we saw families, we saw senior citizens, we saw, so talk to me about the, um, the individuals that are experiencing homelessness in Aroostook County and help, help us give people a better understanding that it, it it's, it's people, it's people you know, or people that you can certainly recognize and, and relate to. Yeah, I don't think, I think that's one of the biggest things um, when we were going around and trying to find a placement for the overflow shelter. Um, there's a lot of stereotypes and, and myths about individuals. And we've said, you know, the face of homelessness is not what you see on TV or movies. It's your neighbors. It's the people that you're in church with. Um, it doesn't discriminate. There's no age bracket. There is no um, special class. It is literally everybody, the folks that um, we were able to house or the folks that we were working with um, would be somebody that would walk down the street and you couldn't pick them out and say that's somebody who's homeless. Um, and so it's really hard to be able to say that other than the fact that these are your neighbors, these are your friends, these are our community members. Um, the 17 individuals that we had in the overflow shelter, um, all but one were born and raised in Arusta County. Um, and I think that there's this common myth that goes around that um, there's a lot of influx of people coming from out of state or from downstate. Um, that's, that's not what we saw in the overflow shelter. So. And so the work uh, continues. Uh, what is it that you're all looking forward to about the opening of this new facility? I can imagine that um, reconnecting with some of the individuals that you had been working with, although many of them are housed, but I, 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 I happen to think that folks still uh, keep in touch with you because they develop quite a bond, uh, do they not, Amber and Jeannie? They, they absolutely do. Um, coaching, is, um, coaching is a um, an all-inclusive service that goes as long as the individual deems it necessary um, to continue to work on their goals and to further progress their life. So our job doesn't stop just because um, people receive um, a different stance in their housing. Um, they still have plenty of other goals that they want to see accomplished. Um, there was one young lady that we had in our overflow, our overflow shelter that you know, she got a job, she moved, she moved out, she moved into an apartment, got a job closer to her apartment, and is now going to be reunited with her child actually today um, through this process. Um, so she's, she's very much staying in contact because there are still a lot more hurdles and um, jumps and steps in life that we're all learning together. So it helps to have an advocate. It helps to have someone alongside you to go, hey, I know this is scary. I know this is a lot going on. I know this is a lot of new, but I'm still right here. Jeannie Fox, that, that truly is uh, what Amber just indicated is, is very much the case. When you're changing circumstances the way that three of you are through the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center and, and the Wellness Shelter before, uh, you're also changing lives. You're changing more than just the circumstance, correct? Yes, definitely. Um, so as you had asked, totally looking forward to connecting, reconnecting with families that we coach, um, ongoing coaching. Um, have had contact with them through the last three months, but um, we'll be able to have more contact with them now that I'm not at the shelter is 
on a daily basis. So definitely looking forward to that. Wonderful. Last thoughts from each of you. What, what have we talked about that you want to make sure people knew about the great work that you're doing and the great things that are happening as a result of that work? Heidi? Oh, no. <laughs> I always get the question first. <laughs> Think about things after. Last thoughts. Um, you know, the last couple months have been so busy. Um, and again, huge life lessons that I will take with me forever. There's no doubt in my mind. I think I'm going to be a stronger worker um, because of what we've experienced. I am super excited to get the ground running um, with this new place. Still a lot more to do, but I can't wait for what the future holds uh, as per usual. Um, and whatever the next, the newest challenges are uh, as we continue with COVID and where that's going to take us, I think we've shown that we're up for the, we're up for the, hurdle and we're going to cross it with whatever means that means so great genie box so definitely um it feels like we're on a roller coaster sometimes um so it's it's going to be nice just to ride straight along here for a few weeks um and just get this um our new program running or the same program but get it run in here at our new building um realizing that there are people out there that need um, need to come and see us. They, they need help with it, be housing, with job search, um, just with um, maybe sometimes it's a call, they need help with childcare, um, but it's, it's just, um, we're here for people. And Amber Tierney, I figured I'd hedge my bets and let the last word be yours, because that seems like the natural order of things around here, so the last word is yours. <laughs> I will take that as the compliment that it is, and I will absolutely give you my last thoughts and last words. Um, I think that um, definitely what is going to be a huge part of this is realizing um, through all of our different lived experiences that our residents came to find and our people that we serve even here in the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center, um, we're a wealth of information, but so are they. Um, that it's a it's a constant give and take, and each of my coworkers offers this different understanding and experience of life that brings vitality and information and resources to the table that isn't something that you can teach or learn. It's it's a it's a lived process, and we get to grow born at each and every day. So I'm excited, not only for what today brings, but I'm looking for tomorrow. Thanks for the opportunity. Well, thank you all right. for all of the great work that you're doing and the work that you did for the last three months with the wellness shelter. And we're so excited about uh, the opening of the reopening, I should say, of the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center um, on the industrial park uh, for the time being um, and the great work continuing and uh, looking forward to visiting out there with you and continuing to see the great work that you're all doing. Thank you all so much. And with that, we uh, before we leave you, we want to remind you that uh, please do reach out to us, whether you're in need of the services offered at the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center or any of our other programs. We encourage you to give us a call. We encourage you to uh, email us at acap-info at acap-me.org. Uh, you can look us up on Facebook where we're constantly posting uh, updates on what's happening with our various programs. You can look on YouTube to find past broadcasts of, of ACAP Today and some other great activities uh, by our early care and education and uh, prevention professionals and also be sure to check out our website we uh, will be in the next month or so launching a brand new version of that website and are excited about that and probably will be talking about that in a future edition of ACAP today but in the meantime there's some valuable information on there uh, that can be helpful to you and as we do each day, we end with our snapshot of the week, uh, as we do each week, I should say, on ACAP Today. And we're reminding folks, we talked about it in our news segment, to sign up um, to complete our community needs assessment. You can go online and complete it online, or you can uh, do it um, uh, by the mail. And this is actually two of our team members, Gloria Duncan, ACAP's executive assistant, who was handing a pile of surveys that Joyce Froelich, uh, who is uh, an, uh, a professional working in our administration department, who had just happened to be filling in at the switchboard at this time uh, and helping to enter in some of the survey responses. There's quite the stack there that Gloria has and we'd like nothing more than to have your survey uh, included in the next stack that she hands over or online 
uh, as we're completing this survey. So please do consider completing our community needs assessment. We do need your help. Uh, that survey link will be open for about another month or so. So please find the time to do that and help us help your community. And with that, uh, that's today's edition or this week's edition, I should say, of ACAP Today. Thank you all so much for joining us. We'll be back next week with another edition on an important topic and news that you need to know. Have a great week, everyone.